Okay, so, um, God, truth is, I don't even really know how to start this video. <laughs> That's me, Amber. You might know me from my videos teaching you how to be, you know, always in fashion. Too fabulous for you. Bye. Teaching you how to be successful. Look at what you want. Really put it out there. Teaching you confidence. I'm Amber, your confidence fairy godmother. How to look put together. Oh my god, who is she? You know, the perfect girl. But the truth is, I'm not really any of those things all the time. In fact, most of the times, I'm quite the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't do my hair, I didn't pick out an outfit. I don't know, sorry. <laughs> Honestly, I just thought that this was much more realistic than how I usually look in my videos. So yeah, anyways, hey guys, if you're new, it's Amber. If you're old, it's still Amber. <laughs> Welcome back to A Girl's Guide to Life. Welcome back to a sit down, real talk series about real important stuff. And uh, today I am going to be talking about perfection. <sighs> so yeah, I just wanna get right into it. Um, does anyone else cry like 45 million times a day for no reason? Is that just me? <laughs> Can we just make crying a fashion statement already? I'm like ready for this. But uh, I was trying to figure out why, and I think at its core is that I'm really, really, really always trying to be perfect. And I'm just not anywhere close. Honestly, there is just an insane amount of pressure lately, you know, to be perfect. You know, the best version of yourself is a great goal, but, but the best version of ourselves have honestly, I feel like morphed into this like robotic fictional character that's always on the grind and always working super hard and is always put together and always has her best foot forward and is always dressed to impress and you know, is always smiley and chipper and happy and ready to go and is a go-getter and doing good for the world and herself and uh, honestly, it's just not even real. Not even for the best of the best. And let me tell you, I know how hard it is to try to be that person. Trust me, I know, because I try. Talking about myself in the third person is so weird, but uh, this bitch, the Amber Show of YouTube and Instagram and all the other weird social media she's openly insane on, this bitch is so cool. Look at her go. You know, I often say I wish I was who I was on the internet because, oh my God, I would love to be this person. Like, she looks like she has her shit together, you know? She always has her hair done, her outfits are on fleek, her room is always clean. She just has it all. But the funny thing about watching my alter ego exist on the internet is that the illusion is shattered because I know the truth. I see her at her worst. I'm actually never usually dressed. My nails are usually not done. This is like a rarity. I got no makeup on. So to be honest, it actually, my skin is kind of on fleek today, but usually there's like at least one or two giant zits that I have to face tune out of pictures, so nobody asks about my skin breaking out. There's actually not even a stain on this sweatshirt, which is actually pretty cool. Usually there's stains on the sweatshirts that I'm wearing. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. This is like the real life me, and that's kind of like the fake life me. And most people don't show this part of themselves. It's like, you know, you always are portraying the best version of you and the coolest parts of your life, and everything is always highlighted, you know, to make you look cool like that. I mean, no one wants to see an outfit of the day photo of me wearing the same sweater I wore three days in a row. Or maybe they do, I don't know. Maybe I'll post that later, but uh, <laughs> point is, I present myself as this girl. Hi! <laughs> How's that for a DIY makeover? Mm, I should win an Oscar for that, honestly. Even though this is how you see me 99% of the time, I am only like this 1% of the time. In fact, we're gonna go on a field trip real quick. Okay, it's probably not the best idea to out myself like this, but uh, YOLO, here's the tea. My room never looks like this picture. My room is always a mess. Like, honestly, a pretty bad mess. I wish it always looked like that. Sometimes you look super hot. And sometimes you look like shit. My eyebrows are like always a little bit fucked up. <laughs> sometimes I'm put together, but uh, most of the time I'm just not. Sometimes I know exactly what I'm doing and sometimes I have absolutely no idea. As it's Amber and Lewis dropping the fat page. <laughs> Turn the mic on. Oh, okay. Sometimes I'm a good role model, and sometimes I'm not. And real truth be told, who I am online is not always who I really am. I always say that I'm a hot mess, and I'm not kidding, but you know, like hot mess is my favorite description of me anyway, because it does let you know that I'm going crazy, but you know, it also reassures me that I look very good doing it. 
You know, that's what being a human is, and we don't talk about that enough. Like, honestly, sure, this bitch is cool. But honestly, this girl's cool too. Even though the duality of woman and the duality of anyone is really their best feature. Get you a girl who can do both? No. Be a girl who is both. Okay, so a little bit more into the nitty gritty. I admit that the thumbnail was a little clickbaity. <laughs> Sorry guys, you know, a girl's gotta shop. But um, on a serious note, I've talked about this in plenty of videos before, but I think if you really want the tea on it, the truth about beauty is a good one to watch. But uh, truth is one of the biggest problems with perfection is that it infiltrates the way we think we should look. And you guys know that it has completely affected um, not just the way that I feel about myself, but the way I act. And honestly, the pressure to look perfect has greatly affected the way that I look too. You know, I gave into it. Like I said before, I wish I didn't, but I did. So there you go. Honestly, we just have to throw looking perfect into the wind because it's just not happening. Like, I'd be the first to tell you, no matter what you do, you're just never gonna look perfect. You're just not. And you're probably not gonna really get much happier. Um, the more you do, you almost get less happy and more hyper aware and more critical. And you know, the more perfect you start to look, the less perfect image that you see. And I think that's the real tea on that. Okay, before I get too emotional, I'm gonna really try not to cry in this video. You know, this is how I look in the photo and this is how I look responding to the comments telling me I'm beautiful. You know, it just isn't real. Your eyeliner is the only thing that can be perfect. Everything else just kinda has to be whatever. <laughs> Cliche as it sounds, you're always still you on the inside. You know, whether you're a bad bitch or a sad bitch, you're always that bitch. Remember that. <laughs> uh, I crack me up. Oh my God, a bird just landed on the balcony, hi. Aside of the pressure to look perfect, I feel like there's honestly also a lot of pressure more so even to act perfect. And uh, I know that's kind of hard to explain, but like smile for the cameras, smile for that guy across the street, smile at the breeze dead Starbucks. And you know, sometimes you just feel like frowning. And I think we should let ourselves frown sometimes. By a show of hands, how many people felt personally victimized by 2020? I'm gonna raise two hands, cause I need two hands. And I bet you all of you are raising your hands too because it was a hard year. Honestly, when people ask me how I am now, I'm not sure if I should just smile and be like, I'm good, how are you? Or if I should just start screaming into the abyss. Like, I just, I don't even know. I have like 17 mental breakdowns a day. I joke about that on Twitter a lot, but like, I'm actually not really kidding, so. <laughs> and that's kind of a hard thing to admit, you know, that you're not really doing that great, especially when outer circumstances look like you are doing that great. Um, it's extra hard, I guess, because it doesn't seem relatable to say, you know, I actually, this wasn't really a great year for me. And it's like, okay, there's a lot of things that don't get shown um, that are even harder than the physical things. So just so you know, um, nobody's life is perfect. Not even hers, <laughs> not even close. Ugh, anyways, um, I think the point I'm trying to say is Sometimes you have perfect outfits, perfect hair days, perfect photo lighting, perfect whatever it is. And I admit, I do have many perfect pairs of shoes, but uh, life is never like that. You can't always say exactly the right thing. You can't always do exactly the right thing because humans are humans and we make mistakes and we're imperfect. And as much as I would love to always have the exact perfect words and the exact perfect actions and the exact perfect everything for every situation life ever throws at me, it doesn't always work that way and that's okay. That's what growing up is, you know? Society expects you to kind of just have your shit together after college and they're like, oh, well, what's your job? Are you married? Like, do you have any kids yet? And I'm like, and ma'am, I don't know how to kill a spider. The truth is barely anyone I know has anything even remotely together. Even the people that you kind of think do, don't. And you know, that's honestly something people never talk about is like, even when you're technically grown up, you're not grown up at all. I have literally no idea what's going on. I'm just pretending. And I think most adults too. And that's like really scary if you think about it. It's like lawyers and doctors are just kind of giant children. <gasps> that stresses me out if I think about it too much. But you know, I guess that explains politics. <laughs> that's a different video. <laughs> Anyways, I actually saw this chart the other day that was kind of talking about a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. And uh, I'll show you a couple of them. But basically the idea is we need to switch our thoughts from negative, perfectionistic, you know, unrealistic goals into more loving self-relationship, um, real life attitudes that can change your world. Your efforts of hard work are not erased by one day of self-indulgence. You know, you need that sort of thing. You need to take a break where you're just wildly irresponsible and you do nothing that you're supposed to be doing and you like really lean into, I think what life is all about, which is the fun, insane, 
stupid days where you're not perfect literally at all. As a wise Twitter philosopher once said, you know, sometimes you just gotta file stuff on your dumb bitch decisions and move on. Nobody's perfect. Honestly, I think something I've learned getting older is like growing up doesn't mean you don't make bad decisions anymore. It means you learn more from them every time and in the future you don't make the same ones again. So there's that on that. You know, honestly, we have to give ourselves more credit because who we were turned us into who we are and is gonna turn us into who we're gonna be. And that means more than we know, I think. I call it the becoming. The growth of who you were into who you are now into who you're meant to be. The becoming. All the little imperfect things that happened to you over the years that kind of shape you who you are and uh, it's not perfect at all, but uh, that's one of my favorite things about life. P.S. you know, there's all these things about perfect timing and you'll know when you know and things will fall into place when they will. And honestly, I think if there's one lesson that I've really learned is that timing is just honestly never perfect for anything. Things happen when they're supposed to happen, that's true, but you should never wait for the perfect right time for something because there's just not. The perfect right time is whatever time you decide to do something because honestly, you're never really ready for anything. I was absolutely not ready to start a YouTube channel. All right, hey guys, what's up? Welcome to what is going to be my official YouTube channel. I most certainly was not actually ready to adopt a dog. Oh, this is ridiculous. I was not ready at all to move to LA. I wasn't ready to live on my own. I was not really ready to start a jewelry line. I don't think I can afford this, to be honest. <laughs> and I'm certainly not ready to buy a house. Sometimes all you have is the dream. And honestly, sometimes that's all you need. You know, I used to play dress up with Barbies as a kid and now I just, you know, get to play dress up with myself and three million of you. Pretty cool. I used to have stuffed animals and now I have a real one. George, where are you? Can I hold you please? I love you. I used to have a lot of dreams and now I can, you know, hold them in my hand. Time changes, nothing. <laughs> There was a quote that I put on my wall in college that said, with your head in the clouds and the stars in your eyes, you'll always be on top of the world. Nine years old or 97, I know that part of me is never gonna change. I'm actually gonna read you guys a little note that I wrote on my phone. Also, I just noticed today that I have 333 notes in my phone, isn't that cool? I'm so cheesy, okay. <clears throat> Anyways, here it is. Oh God, I don't know where it is. Now I have to find it. Man, prepare this. A note on thankfulness. This year I was free, trapped, young, old, dumb, and wise. I felt brave, I felt small, I felt like I had the world at my fingertips, and let it go. I did a lot of things for the very first time, and unknowingly, a lot of things for the last time. I experienced my first true heartbreak, but with that I learned what it meant to truly love. Is it worth it? Yes, I'd do it a thousand times over. And in that lies the lesson I learned the most from this year. There's two sides to everything. Wisdom and folly, joy and sorrow, light and dark, good and evil. The universal yin and yang. And I'm thankful for all of it. To all that made me feel like the world was ending. To all that made me feel like it had just begun. To all that lit up my soul and all that made it go dark for a little while. To all of it. I'm thankful for the becoming. As a wise man once said, to all that I've done, good and the bad, that is life. As much as we try to make every individual thing in our lives perfect or seem perfect, it's just, the truth is it's never like that. And honestly, I think that's kind of, in the end of the day, what makes life, oh God, this is so cheesy, but like imperfectly perfect, truly. <sighs> oh, I'm always cheesy, but even for me, that was a lot. It's true though, so, there you go. So your homework for this week is to do one thing that's just kinda wrong. Eat cake for dinner if you want. Wear cheetah print pants with a leopard print top and zebra shoes. Let your laundry pile up and go to dinner with your friends instead. Live your life. Not every decision you make and every action you take has to be, you know, perfect. Sometimes your decisions can just be for joy. And that is perfect. Anyways, in closing, um, I kind of did a lot of rambling. I don't know if this video made any sense at all or if you're even still watching. Thanks for still watching. <laughs> I think the point of what I really wanted to say is just to remember that it's okay to be kind of a mess. We're all a mess. Even if literally no one else relates to this video except one person, at least whoever you are, the one person watching who also feels a little bit nuts sometimes. Um, I hope you know you're not alone because I too am just as crazy and probably crazier than you. 
P.S. Remember, no matter what, the most seemingly perfect person in the room and the least seemingly perfect person in the room have one thing in common. Neither one is anywhere near perfect. And that makes you and me just as damn close to perfect as it gets. I love you. Take joy in the chaos. Stay perfectly imperfect. Till next time. XO. Yeah, that's hot.